Greetings, everybody. This is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is the resurrection and the life. This is going to be part two, probably the end of resurrections in the Bible. Part one was the Old Testament resurrections. Uh, Elisha, Elijah, and um, and this will be the New Testament with the Prince of Life. So let's go to Book of Mark, chapter 5. And let's see, verse 21. Yeah, I remember I read... I read Mark chapter 5 in one of the other recent studies. I think it was casting out devils. Yeah. So, all right. And, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, Jesus, and when he saw him, Jesus, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Uh, boy, that takes some serious faith, doesn't it? You know, you got all these fake preachers on uh, TBN, my opinion that uh, do all these healings and so-called in front of the TV sh stations. Hey, uh, hey, preacher on TVN, why don't you go down to the Children's Hospital, Cancer Hospital? How about St. Jude's in Memphis? And uh, clean that hospital out, empty it out, heal all the kids. Why don't you do that, huh? Instead of uh, having a bunch of slain in the spirit junk on in front of a TV camera. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but years ago, somebody recorded like three months of Benny Hinn's, uh, uh, I don't know what you call him, his TV show or whatever. And he was touching people and laying hands on them and all this stuff. And uh, he did that for three or three or four months. And then he started comparing the people that were in the line that he was getting, touching these people and they were getting healed and all this stuff, saying they were healed. And he started noticing it was the same people. Oh, yeah, you know, they would dress differently and, you know, maybe grow a little beard or whatever. But he noticed it was the same people. And uh, boy, I watched that. And this, it was, it was right there. I mean, you know, you couldn't deny it. Supposedly, Benny Hinn offered him a quarter million dollars to uh, quit providing the, uh, doing this movie thing or whatever it was. And uh, suppose, uh, he said he turned it down. I don't know if it was ever on YouTube. It was on a actually a VHS tape. I saw this like like 20 years ago. I don't remember. But I was like, really? Boy, people like that are going to get they're going to get they're going to get theirs work one day, so. All right, so verse 24. And Jesus went with him, Jairus, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, 
turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and troubling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. All right, Mark chapter 5, verse 34. And he, Jesus, said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered, or allowed, and he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. You ever heard the Shakespeare expression, much ado about nothing? Verse 40, And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it. Don't tell everybody what I just did. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given to her, be given her to eat. All right, let's look at the next one. Jesus does it again. All right, let's go to the book of Luke. Chapter 7. We're going to read the whole chapter, I guess. Uh, verse 1. Now when he, Jesus, had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant... Now wait a minute. What is a centurion? Centurion is where we get the word century. He's a commander. A centurion was a commander. Uh, so keep that in mind. But uh, let's see. So it was approximately 180 to 100 men. So that's about half the size of a um, Half the size of a U.S. Army company. So, so he's a ruler. He's like a, I guess, a lieutenant or captain. Verse 2, And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he, the centurion, heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation and hath built us a synagogue. Now, if you ask me, it's pretty obvious that this guy is probably an Israelite, divorced Israel, Jeremiah 3.8, Jeremiah 31.31. 31. Verse 6, Then Jesus went with them and when he was not and and when he was now not far from the house the centurion sent friends to him saying unto him lord trouble not thyself 
for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Wow, what kind of faith is that? You don't, you don't, you don't even have to come touch him. Just say the word and he's going to be healed. Verse 8, For I, the centurion, for I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. See, he's telling Jesus that, like Jesus, he also is a man under authority. He's under the authority of Rome, which is was given by God the Father. But Jesus is also under God the Father, and he's doing the Father's work. Now, believe me, Rome was in charge because God the Father put them there at that time period. And have no doubt about it. You know why we got wicked rulers? Because God is allowing it. Read the book of Judges sometime. You will totally understand, totally understand what's going on. Verse 9. When Jesus heard these things, you know, that he was a man under authority, when Jesus, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Jesus had compassion on a lot of people. Me too, and I didn't deserve it. Trust me. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier. And they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet has risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. Oh yeah, Jesus is a great prophet, but that's only the beginning. He's far more. 17. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him all of all these things. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Are, we, are you the Christ, or are we looking for somebody else? When the men, uh, 20, when the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another. And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. And Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You know, there's, 
Yeah, I believe it's Matthew. Well, let me make sure before I open my mouth. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 4. We're going to skip around a little bit here. Verse 1. And he, Jesus, began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken or listen. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Well, what is a sower? You know, it's when the farmer's planting seeds, right? Verse 4, And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he, Jesus, was alone, they that were with him, with the twelve, asked him of the parable, the twelve disciples, the apostles. Verse 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Hmm. You see, when people tell you that they're universalists and they believe that any two-legged creature walking down the road can believe in Jesus and be saved, is that does that hold water with what's being said here? God speaks in, you know, Jesus speaks in terrible, God in the flesh speaks in parables so that they would see but not understand, and hear they wouldn't, you know, hear, hear see and hear they wouldn't understand. Lest at any time they should be converted, and their sin should be forgiven them. See, a lot of people follow Jesus for the wrong reasons. They wanted to see a magic show, you know, the healings. Others followed him because of the food that he fed them. You know, hey, a free meal. Let's follow Jesus around. But their hearts were not with Jesus. Verse 13. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. Who sows the word? Jesus sows the word. The word of God. Jesus is the sower. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. See, God, Satan is God of this world. People want the things of this world, not the things of Christ. 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. People, I went through so much when I first came to the Lord, you wouldn't, I couldn't even tell you some of the stories of some of the things that happened to me. I, you know, they'd lock me up in a mental institution if I told you some of the things 
that happened to me when I first came to the Lord. I mean, seriously. You know, I, I couldn't tell you all the things. I mean, I, I had so much crazy stuff happen to me. Unbelievable. My father, in the flesh anyways, said to me, he says, I've known a lot of people in my lifetime, Bob, but he says, I have never met anybody that has had as much bad luck as you have. Seriously. But it wasn't bad luck. It was Satan's attacks, I'm 99% sure, but, uh, you know. So, see, when persecution comes, when people find out that they might have to get their heads cut off for Jesus or be put to death, they're going to be offended. Hey, I didn't sign up for this. You know, I was told when, when you have Jesus come in your heart, uh, you know, watching TBN, they told me I was going to be healthy and rich. I don't think so, people. I don't think so. When affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, good works, fruit, good works, some thirtyfold, and some sixty, and some an hundred. Wow. And he said, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but at that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Wow. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 33, Jesus says, But whosoever shall deny me, deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Wow. All right, so let's go back to, uh, let's see, where were we? Luke 7. Luke 7, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 22. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John, John the Baptist, what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment, soft clothing? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before my face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, now this is Jesus speaking, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people had heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. And by the way, John's baptism was for the remission of sin. Verse 30, But the Pharisees 
and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. All right, in Acts 2.38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, turn away from your sin, repent to be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. John baptized, it was a ceremonial washing of the flesh for the washing away of sins, but when Jesus baptized them, he was baptizing them with the Holy Ghost. Big difference. Big, big difference. All right, so let's go back to Luke. Uh, hmm. All right. Verse 30, But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? They are like unto children, sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye, the Pharisees, and ye say, He hath a devil. They're saying he's demon-possessed. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. If you don't know what a glutton is, a glutton's a person that eats too much. And a wine bibber. So they're basically calling him a, uh, basically a, a drunken, yeah. So they're, they're, you know, this is the expression, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So, a friend of publicans and sinners. But behold... I'm sorry, but wisdom is justified of all her children. All right, let's go to John chapter 11. Most of you should know this story. Verse 1. Now a certain man was Nick, sick, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two, stay, two days still in the same place where he was. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, this guy's sick and dying, and you're going to hang out here for a couple more days, not going? Really? Then after he said, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the you know whose of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Uh, there's a certain three-letter word that I hate to even say because it gets me in trouble with uh, the, um, yeah, gets me in trouble every time. It's getting to the point you can't even read the Bible anymore. Well, there's a certain group of people that want to put a sticker on all Bibles as a warning that it is... Uh, hate speech for a certain groups of people. Verse 9. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then say, 
said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought he had spoken of taking of rest and rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. God, you guys are dense. Well, that's the Bob commentary there. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now let me tell you something, people. Uh, there's no way the you-know-whos can say that Lazarus really wasn't dead. When you're in the grave for four days, you've had no water for four days, you're dead. Almost all people are dead within three days of not drinking any water. Four days, no way. I just don't see it. But then again, I'm not a medical specialist. so. But if you don't drink any water for four days, you're in big trouble, especially in the desert. Uh, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. 18. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the you know whose came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Wow, that's some faith, huh? 23. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Wow. Uh, wait a minute. How can the pre-trib rapture happen before the last day. Huh? Martha knows more about the Bible than all, every Baptist preacher that I've ever met. You see, the Baptist preachers say, well, we're going to be pre-trib raptured out of here seven before the seven-year tribulation. Praise a Jesus. Uh, amen. Uh, yeah, I know. I mock them. The resurrection happens at the last day. When Jesus returns in the clouds with the cloud of witnesses to his glory to take the kingdom from, from the devil in the, to the glory of the Father, that's going to be the last day of this earth. That's when the resurrection happens, not seven years before. Martha has more brains than a lot of Baptist preachers. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Verse 25, listen to this carefully. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Boy, that's a confession. Verse 28. And when... She had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come and calleth for thee. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. 
Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The you know whose then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth to the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He groaned in the spirit and said, where have ye laid him? See, Martha had more faith than Mary did. Mary knew that if Jesus wanted, he could raise Lazarus from the dead. But Mary doesn't seem to believe that. She's like, if you'd been here, my brother had not died. So he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Verse 34, and said, where have ye laid him? Laid him. They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. I did a Bible study on Jesus wept. This is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in, groaning in himself, coming cometh to the grave. It, uh, it was a cave, and a, stone, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, that thou shouldest see the glory of God? Verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. And many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? What are we going to do? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. That's right. Jesus is going to die for his people, and the whole nation Israel is not going to perish because of the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, who was slain from the foundation of the world to take away the sins of the world. Wow.
Verse 51. For this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, Judah. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God which that were scattered abroad. In other words, the 11 tribes that were divorced in Jeremiah 3.8 that were to be gathered together again in Jeremiah 31.31. 31, 31. 53. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him, Jesus, to death. Wow. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the you-know-whos, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, Ephraim and there continued with his disciples. Wow. 55. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What think ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. Now I think I'm going to make, I was going to try to make this uh, the end of the series, but I, I'm going to make this part two and I'm going to do a part three because there's uh, a lot more material to cover. This always happens, you know, pfft, sorry for being long winded. Some of you like it. Some of you could do without, but yeah, that's all right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.